Hi everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. Thank you for tuning into my channel. If you haven't done so already, please leave a comment, hit the like button, and subscribe to the, my channel because when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. So today, so today's topic is I'm answering an email from a viewer. Thank you very much. And he asked me if I could do a video on male pattern baldness, hair thinning, and what is going on with DHT. So when it comes down to it, male hair loss or thinning, the main causation of it is increased levels of DHT, dihydrotestosterone. And that's activated by the enzyme. Everything is activated in the body by enzymes. Now the whole thing, if you've seen my previous videos, I'm always talking about you're trying to control the activation of certain enzymes. Not that we want to stop it, but we don't want to overactivate that conversion. Now you got the conversion of testosterone to DHT with 5-alpha reductase. Now when it comes down to hormones, okay, everything starts off with cholesterol. Cholesterol is our friend. I know the media always portrays cholesterol as being bad and there's so many people that are on cholesterol medications but however, it's really horrible for you because we need cholesterol for body functions. And where do we get cholesterol? Through, through the good dietary fats, healthy fats, avocados, olive oil, nuts, things like that, fish, because those nice healthy fatty acids convert in our system to cholesterol. So a little bit of history. So when did all this stuff start acting up? About in the early 90s when the what? When the low fat diets became a fad. Low fat diets are horrific because why we need good fats for the formation of cholesterol. Then it goes down, cholesterol turns into pregnenolone, pregnenolone turns to DHEA, DHEA turns to androstenedione. Now it comes for the guys, we have testosterone here, and we have one side that converts into DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and it also converts down to estradiol. In certain quantities, our body is okay. So with testosterone, with 5-alpha reductase, about 10% is normally converted to DHT, and we need it. We need it for production of hair follicles and male secondary sec uh, uh, sexual characteristics. In addition, testosterone, about 0.3% to 5% of testosterone is converted to estradiol through the enzyme aromatase. And I've done videos on that before. How do you stop the... How do you stop the overconversion of testosterone to estradiol? Is you want to block the uh, enzyme aromatase by how? Taking DIM and also two, one of the things that activates that is insulin release through sugar, through sugar, alcohol, and sugar. So let's talk about let's talk about the different hormones that are naturally produced through the conversion from cholesterol. Because remember, cholesterol is our friend, and I cannot stress that enough. So testosterone, the primary male, and, uh, male androgen involved in sexual development, fertility, bone health, muscle formation, body composition, and cognitive function. The majority of males are 80%. I always say it's the 80-20 rule. So you have 80% for males, testosterone. Now remember, a small amount is converted to estradiol, estrogen, up to about 5%. It has to. It's good for bone health, cognitive function, especially <coughs> plasma lipids. Plasma lipids, okay, where is estrogen produced primarily? In the adipose tissue, your fatty tissue, adrenals. So we need fat to be healthy for also for estrogen to be activated. So fat is actually good for you, the good healthy fats, and also too, like I said, estradiol is also needed. Okay, so in addition to DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Again, normally it's converted about 10%. See, it's a more potent. This could be your best friend and your worst enemy. It's a very potent androgen, and it's involved in hair follicles, prostate development, sebum conduction. What's that production? That's like uh, your sweat. Sebum is your sweat. <clears throat> and the external genitalia development. So we need the conversion, but not over. Now, what happens if you have too much conversion of... DHT from testosterone. You're going to get acne. Why? Because we have the sebaceous follicles, the glands, which secrete sebum, which is the natural oil. 
This is why young males, when they're going through puberty, you know, their hormones are all over the place. So what happens with young males? They get acne. It's normal. Their testosterone, their, their bodies are growing. Okay, their bodies are growing, it's normal, but it should come back to a baseline where it's not overzealous. However, you know if you're producing too much DHT is because you do get acne and also as men get older, if they're producing too much, what's happening, they're, they're going to have a receding hairline. Why? Because it actually shrinks the hair follicle. It actually shrinks the hair follicle in and of itself. If you want to, usually sometimes when I get when I do a male uh, complete male hormonal test, I want to find out where the DHT levels are. And you can get blood work done, just take a DHT blood test. Also to exercise. Exercise is important in, in overall development, balancing out hormones, activating how the growth system works. It's good for the brain, it's good for the mind. Quit smoking. When you smoke, you're toxifying your system. When you're smoking, you're toxifying your system. And you're smoke, you're toxifying your system, which is actually lowering the conversion of hormones. Lower your stress levels. I know stress is a big thing, but what happens when you increase your stress levels, the cortisol release, cortisol, which is a glucocorticoid, okay, that activates the aromatase enzyme. So not only are you converting more testosterone to estradiol, but in addition, because you're stressed out, sure, you're gonna start pulling more over DHT. Diet, wheat, gluten, sugar, soy, peanuts, dairy. That will all activate that 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Okay, supplements. Now, the, the dosage is going to vary. This is why I didn't put any doses down here. I know there's a lot of people that always sign it. How much do I take of this? Here's the thing. When I hear those questions, what I do, I just Google it. So that's my secret. So it, the dosage is dose dependent on the person. Salt palmetto. Now the goal is, the goal of all these is to block the conversion of 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Pygnium. It's a T. Magnesium L3 and 8. Magnesium L3 and 8, I used on previous, previous videos, that's phenomenal for the brain. But it's also phenomenal because it helps block the 5 alpha reductase enzyme. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is phenomenal for everything. Okay, this is one thing I say take 1,000 milligrams at least three times a day. Because vitamin C and also too, collagen protein, our bodies are made of collagen. This is all, this is all, this is what puts everything together. Vitamin C and collagen protein, they go hand in hand. It's like a record. You have an A side and a B side. They go together to produce more collagen. So increasing your collagen and your vitamin C is going to help reduce, one, the 5 alpha ductase uh, enzyme from occurring, but also, two, it's going to help regrow your body. And it's to biotin. Biotin is phenomenal as well. Okay? So I hope this helps. If you have any comments, leave, please leave them down below. And like and share, and I'll see you in the next one. Be good.